What's going on guys? Kaylee here and welcome back to the Honeystead. So the other day I challenged you guys in one of my videos. Actually, I think it's been maybe a little longer than the other day, but I challenged you guys to find five edible plants that are growing out in your area. Something that you can forage for. Even if it's in your yard, go for it. There are a lot of things that are growing that would be considered weeds that you can actually eat. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who are a little uncomfortable with the way things are going. Um, I want to help you, actually more or less, I wanna share with you some of the things that are growing in, in my area that may be growing in your areas that could be considered edible and give you that power of, of knowledge to reassure you that it's, it's gonna be okay. So, let's go talk about some of the things that are growing <laughs> that you can eat. Before I get too far into this video, I want to take a couple of minutes and say a special thank you, which I saved the note. Enjoy your gift, fellow beekeeper. My wife has more bee fear than you. They are pretty gentle, right? Thank you for your videos from Dave. His wife sent me over two books that, which is really interesting. I had been wanting to order this book and it was a very nice surprise. This is Edible Wild Plants and the author of it is Thomas S. Ellis and Peter A. Dykeman. So this one right here, this has been on my radar for a good little while and being that I challenged you guys to find five edible plants, just five, there are so many more. In fact, this book right here, it's a North American field guide to over 200 natural foods. I just wanted you to find five, but looking at it, there are so many more. And then they also sent over Mushrooming Without Fear. And this book was written by Alexander Schwab. So very excited about both of these. My mom actually grabbed this one and was like, oh, I really, really like it because it, it, it truly breaks down the anatomy of a mushroom, how to identify. And it also shares about the different types of trees that the mushrooms grow on, which will ultimately help you be able to determine what species of mushroom that you found and to make sure that you're not eating one that's going to do harm. I figured what better way to do this video than to grab this book, talk about my five plants, and let's see what it has to say. I will be adding them to our Amazon store for you guys to be able to find the link fairly easily. And that's another way it does help support our channel and what we're doing here. So come on, let's go to the woods. Let's talk about this lovely little plant right here. This plant right here. I actually have a couple of different ages. This one's definitely older. Um, and let's see if I can get a little bit closer. This is the younger. This is newer. So this plant right here, we call it yellow dock. I know how I've been able to use it in the past um, by harvesting these little seed pods that tend to turn red. This time of year, we're kind of getting there. Some of them are starting to turn, um, but, but not all of them quite yet. And as soon as they start turning red, that's when I know, okay, we can go ahead, pull this. You can grind this down. It's a great alternative for flour if you need to do any baking. Yellow dock is also known as sour dock or curly dock. This one is not the curly dock. I do have the curly dock that does grow around here. And it's basically, it looks the same. It's just the, the leaves tend to have like a little bit more of a curl to them. It is edible summer, autumn, and winter. And what I found that has been extremely fascinating with foraging for wild edibles is to know when you can harvest it. The scientific name for yellow docks is Rumex crisp crispus. And I'll make sure to put that down below for you guys to be able to actually look it up by scientific name. By using the scientific name, it is a better way to narrow down because there are multiple different species 
that could be considered the same. So just take that into consideration, especially when it comes to foraging for wild edibles or medicinal plants as well. But a lot of the wild edible plants are also considered medicinal plants as well. The Habitat for Yellow Dock, based on this book, which I do agree, it is common in disturbed sites, fields, roadsides, vacant lots. It can grow up to five feet tall. This one is probably about three feet altogether. You can harvest the leaves in, in early spring or even throughout winter. And when you cook them down, it actually tastes like very much like a beet green. If anybody has ever had greens from their beets, this is very similar to it. If you eat a large amount, it may upset your stomach, so do take that into consideration when it comes to foraging and adding wild edibles into your diet. And I do know that the older the leaf, the more bitter it will taste. So if you are cooking the older leaves, it might just take a little while to, to cook that down to get that bitter taste out of it. One of the things that I do really enjoy about this book is that it actually does offer if there is possibly a poisonous lookalike. When it comes to yellow dock, there is not uh, a poisonous lookalike, so I don't need to be too concerned about that. But soon I will be coming back through and harvesting all of this, and we're gonna grind this up and turn this we should turn this into a flower. But essentially anything that you would add flour to, this could be an alternative substitute for. And that is one thing that I'm looking for. Also note that this is the same thing as that yellow dock that we were talking about. It just hasn't gone to seed yet. This is a good alternative source of food in the event of you need it. I only took about five steps from that yellow dock and I am sitting here and I'm looking and I can already identify one, two, three, four, four more edible plants just right here. And I have a whole list more that I could share with you guys, but I'm here. And yeah, this is a perfect example of being able to go out and forage for food and how easy it really is. That lovely little berry that I just showed you is not a raspberry. A lot of people get that confused because they look very much like a raspberry. That is actually called a wine berry. The scientific name for the wine berry is Robus funiculaceus. And again, I am not that great on pronouncing certain words, but I do know what they are and I will put it down below so you guys can actually see it. The wine berries are such a sweet treat. You can eat them raw, you can harvest them, make jellies, you can make jams, you can put them into baking, anything that you would do with a regular berry, that is how you can preserve it and that is how you can eat it. So some of the things that I've done with the wine berry, I have harvested a bunch. They typically don't make it back into the house because we end up eating it throughout the woods. Wine berries were introduced from Asia and they typically grow along paths, trails, disturbed land, close to water. Pretty much on our property, all along the wood lines is where we find the wine berries. And one of my favorite things to do is watch the bees forage for the pollen. And it tends to have like a very gray kind of tint. So when I go and I do my hive inspections and if I see that color pollen, I know that they have found the wine berries as well as the Allegheny blackberry, which also grows very much like the wine berry, except of course they're, they're a darker color, but just as delicious. Let's take a closer look at wine berries so you can be able to, to understand and know how to determine it. One of the easiest ways for me to determine the wine berry are the red hairs that grow on the outside of the, the flowering hole, I guess would be the term, um, prior to the berry actually being produced. Now these are not ripe. The other way that I actually um, am able to determine is if you look at the actual stems itself that are growing down the vine, they have like a purplish reddish appearance. For me, this is a fairly easy way for me to be able to identify the wine berry, but we'll have to find some that are ready to be eaten. This is a really cool book. It even has a breakdown of the nutritional values of the food that we are sourcing. It's broken down by energy building blocks, minerals, and vitamins, which I think is extremely valuable. That yellow dock can produce 5.6 grams of carbohydrates, which I think is very interesting. And then it has 0.3 grams of fat and 2.1 grams of protein and 28 calories. So if you are in the need to find a source of food that is 
going to be extremely nourishing of the body. This was really an interesting find and it even has the minerals and the vitamins as well. This is the stuff that excites me. You know, I, I love gardening, I really do, but I'm gonna be extremely honest. I think I like foraging a lot more than gardening. <laughs> This is my burdock garden. <laughs> this is common burdock. This is when it is in a younger form, but eventually it will grow massive, massive leaves like this. And I'll show you this right here. When you go through the woods and you get these little burrs that cling to you, this is actually uh, what it is. Um, this is in flower form, but there's little burrs. Those are actually seed pods. Now, obviously this right here probably wouldn't do anything with it, but the younger ones that haven't gone to flower yet, that is what I'm kind of looking for. Burdock is probably one of my most favorite medicinal plants, and we're gonna talk about that on another video. But for the edible properties, let's talk about common burdock. The scientific name for common burdock is Arctium minus, Arctium minus, Y'all know. Anyways, and I shared in one of my last videos about actually preserving some of the burdock. The root itself can grow massive. And if you go to an oriental market, you can actually find burdock root, but it's gonna be under a different name, which is called gobo. But why do I need to go purchase it when I have probably hundreds of thousands growing here on our property? When it comes to harvesting your burdock root, one of the things that I found is the bigger the plant, the bigger the root, which it'll make it a little bit more difficult when it comes to digging the root up. So a first year plant in the summertime before it goes to flower and seed, I think is probably the perfect time to harvest it. And when you clean up the root, you can eat it raw or you can cook it up. And one of my favorite ways to actually eat it is sauteed up with a little bit of seasoning and some butter. It's like a combination of if a potato and a carrot made a baby. I think that's the texture that I would say that it is, if that makes any sense. I also saw something pretty interesting that a gentleman actually used the burdock leaves itself, the big massive leaves, to uh, as a ground cover for their garden for weed control. I was definitely blown away by that and I had to share that with you guys because honestly, what an awesome alternative source for uh, a weed barrier. For the next plant that I'm gonna talk about, I can pretty much guarantee that almost every single one of you has this growing in some form or, an, or another in your walkway or in your garden or like I have right here in my yard on my wood line. This right here is dandelion. Biggest weeds that everyone tries to kill, right? You know, but it actually has a lot of, of medicinal as well as edible opportunities for you to be able to enjoy. Let's talk about it. The dandelion's green, eaten raw, consists of about 45 calories, 0.7 grams of fat, 9.2 grams of carbohydrates. Again, if you are out in the woods and you need energy, this is growing. You can eat it raw. You can eat it like a salad. In fact, it's delicious and it tastes amazing in a salad. For, for calcium, it has 187 milligrams of calcium and 397 milligrams of potassium. I wish more and more people would give this weed a chance to grow. When it comes to dandelion, it is probably one of the first flowers that tends to bloom here in the spring and I truly celebrate it for our honeybees. They absolutely adore the flower and it is one of the best sources of food for them that grows at the first bit of spring, at the first bit of spring. Now, when it comes to harvesting, you can eat the leaves when they are nice and tender, eat them like a salad, add them into your salad. You can cook with them too if you want. You can saute them up. The other thing that you can do is you can harvest the root. The root itself is actually delicious and you can roast it and make a chicory like, which we'll talk about chicory too, but you can make like a roasted dandelion root coffee alternative if you want. But the flowers, the leaves, and the root are edible, and it pretty much grows everywhere. Now I know we spoke about this in one of my last videos, but let's talk about it again. So I have to admit that 
I, this, we could do this. We can continue to do this because I feel like I could have done five, if not more, in that one spot that I was at when I first started this video. And I really only walked maybe about 50 feet, 50 feet to 100 feet from my front door. I am about 30 feet from my front door right now. And we're gonna talk about the last plant that is edible, that is considered a weed growing right here in my front yard, right actually in my driveway. But there are so many, you know, and there are so many, and there are so many for each season. And that is the thing that is just so exciting to me. The last plant that we're gonna talk about, I actually shared with you guys, this is what I use uh, when it comes to bee stings and bug bites but it is edible and, and it's actually really delicious. The last plant that we are going to talk about is Plantago major, which is also a broadleaf plantain. This is the leaf itself. It's one of those weeds that tend to grow around driveways, paths, trails, and it's extremely prolific. And a good way to enjoy plantain is cooking it, sauteing it up with a little bit of butter, some mushrooms that you might find, some wild garlic that is growing also outside, which we'll talk about that, I think, in one of our other videos. But another way that you can enjoy this plant that I've seen a few people do, this whole stock is actually the seeds to, to plantain, and it'll flower, but you can take this and saute it up as well and eat it. You can also make a tea with the plantain leaves as well. I can't wait until we can talk about the five medicinal plants that you can forage for. And a lot of these are gonna be the same because this definitely has a lot of medicinal properties. We have tinctured it, we've made salves with it. Um, you can make a tea with it. Oh, it's a good one. But the Edible Wild Plants book actually said something that I have never read before and never heard. And I'm kind of excited to see if we can try this. We can dry the seeds thoroughly and also grind them into flour. For pancakes, you can combine two cups of plantain flour with three tablespoons of baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of sugar, two eggs, and three tablespoons of cooking oil and a cup of milk. This seed can be used as an alternative for flour. We might have to try this because, yeah, we might have to try this. Young tender leaves that grow tend that tend to be in the center of the actual plant, like this. The young tender ones, not so much the outside ones, but the young tender ones, you can actually add it into your salad. But those were just five plants that are growing about 100 feet away from my front door. And I can almost guarantee that many of you have at least two of them, three of them possibly. And also a quick reminder, just to do your research prior to going out and forage. Try to avoid roadsides and also yards that may have been sprayed to try to fight these weeds. You know, a lot of people wanna get rid of these plants and I don't understand why. <laughs> they are not only uh, edible, but they are also medicinal. And I cannot wait to take this video and I think we're gonna roll this video over and I'm gonna talk about each of these five plants and how they could be medicinal for you as well. Keep an eye out for that video. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.